little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Com. Just a quick update on kind of where we stand with the crypto's um, big slam down based on FUD, apparently. We're so used to this. But the people who haven't been in it for a while are not used to this. Pure manipulation. I talk about it a lot. This time it was a rumor of a Bitcoin double spend. Double spend problem would have put Bitcoin out of business. Um, of course, it was done... The, the people who raised the issue was BitMEX Research. We all know that BitMEX is one of the criminal deep state cabal players. And they were running the big uh, uh, Bitcoin derivative market. Complete criminals. I think they're under investigation right now. But their research team said, hey, here it is. Here's the double spend. Um, so Cointelegraph ran with that. It has since been debunked. Um, so... Back to normal again. <laughs> Good time to buy cryptos, probably, maybe. Who knows, really? Um, again, they can place the price of all cryptos at zero. They can shut down the exchanges. They can do whatever they want. Do I think they will? No. The problem is, if you, you're trying to time something like that, you won't be able to buy it on an exchange. Those exchanges will go down, and poof, you've lost whatever money you have hanging out there. Get your assets in your own possession. Who knows where the price will go? We saw the price of oil go to negative 40. Nobody thought that was even possible. We could see the price of Bitcoin go into the negative. Who knows? I'm trying to sell it, and it's locked up in this contract. Will you, I'll, I'll pay you to buy, take my position type of thing. Just hang on. Just hang on. All this bullshit will go away. We'll get to decentralized exchanges down the line. Uh, but right now, this was most likely done by the criminals behind BitMEX. I don't think it will last very long, but we'll find out, right? Um, are we inching up to the financial crash? Probably. Now that Trump's out of the office, he doesn't have a problem with the financial crash happening on the um, on the socialists when they're on the clock, right? right? We have socialism has invaded our capital. Um, so, yeah. I do expect to see a full market crash and the destruction of all the banks and all the assets with it. And it'll, it won't be blamed on Trump and the, the good guys. It, it'll be blamed on the socialists. And then there's a lot of other information to come out. Do we really need a government? Do we really need these criminals leading us? Uh, I don't think we do. Will Trump get back in as president? I don't, I don't think it matters. I would say... 50-50 if he wants to. If the truth's revealed, we don't need Trump. You know, we probably need a different president if everybody knew the truth. Someone more kind and gentle. Trump was the bull in the China shop who was put there for a reason. And we'll find out very soon what that reason was, I believe. We'll find out. I don't know. I just, all I know is right now, they're printing money like it's going out of style, but it's nothing new. And I want to show you this chart. This is all the debt that's been accumulated by every president since, let's go back to, hell, it doesn't even matter where we go back to, uh, JFK. Right after JFK. Let's go to Richard Nixon, who took us off the gold standard, right? The national debt, total debt, was $121 million yeah, from 1969 all the way up till 1974. Uh, and no, that, that was the amount he increased it by started at 353 million and he left at 475. So he increased it. Nixon increased it 121 million. Every single president since has increased the debt massively. Trump is the leader. Number one, he's always number one. And you might think that's a bad thing. The closer we get to destroying the monetary system, the closer we get to freedom, believe it or not, in this unbacked fiat system. So we had uh, Nixon at 120 million when he, by the time he came and left, Gerald Ford 223, Jimmy Carter 299, Ronald Reagan, Star Wars supply side economics, 1.8 billion, and then you had now you gotta you gotta break out the years. So Reagan was in for eight years, Bush Senior was only in for uh, four years. So if you double the Bush Senior. He's over $3 billion. See, every time, they, it increases and it increases. 
So Bill Clinton, $1.3 billion. That's, that's the only time it went down. But it went down under Bill Clinton because they changed all the metrics of what constituted debt. It, and it, it was bad. He spent massive amounts of money. George Bush Jr. jumps it up to, to $6 trillion. Uh, I hope I said trillions before. Ron Reagan was $1.8 trillion. Bush, in his four years, was $1.5 trillion. Bill Clinton, in his eight years, was only $1.3 trillion. But again, he changed all the metrics, to all of them. Social Security payments came in, and he count that as, as income. <laughs> Insane. Uh, George Bush, $6 trillion. And everybody's like, oh, my God. Look how much. Eight years, $6 trillion. Barack Obama blew him away at $8 trillion. Nobody came close to what Trump did in just four years. This this is as of a, a few months ago. It's uh, final tally I think was twenty seven point eight, so it would be a total of eight trillion dollars. And you might think, oh my God, Donald Trump, a conservative. Every single president did it. Why? Because they're trying to destroy the system. It goes back to the road to root of theory. Now, this is a screenshot, although I mocked it up. This is what I was trying to show everybody what the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston website looked like on January 1st, 2008. These two comic books, Wishes and Rainbows and The Road to Root of Teacher's Guide, were published that very day, January 1st, 2007. I was there. Don't ask me why I was there. But both of them had huge red exclamation points right next to them. This is the Federal Reserve Bank. And the Wishes and Rainbows comic book is all about the need to go back to a gold standard. There was two versions. One came out in 1981. In 1981, what was going on? We had hyperinflation, gold, gold going to $800, silver to $50, my God. And they and Ronald Reagan set up the Gold Commission to study, should we go back to a gold standard? The final conclusion was, not yet, but at some point we'll have to. That was their final conclusion. If we can get the debt in line, then we don't have to go back to gold standards. So what have they done since 1981? Look at that. Reagan jumped at $1.8 trillion. Everybody. It is completely off the charts at $28 trillion now. But where did we see this? These are the two comic books. This is all on the Road to Ruta uh, public under Road to Ruta Letters. It's called The Road to Ruta or the Implementation of a New Gold Standard. These are the two comic books. That's the 1981 version here on the right side. It was revamped for right before the 2008 crash. And I do the full analysis. Where does Ruta come from? It's a computer programming term. Alan Greenspan was the one who programmed those programs in the 60s. Alan Greenspan blames himself for Y2K because he did it. He was the best computer programmer in the world. Created financial computer programming. Along with this guy, Stephen DuVos. Stephen, you cannot hide anymore. It's time to come out of the shadows, my friend. All right. And then Edward, Ed, uh, George Goodwin Jr. Um, but this guy, where is his name? Sullivan. Harold J. Sullivan. That's the guy who's been hiding. Um, he wrote a book called Civil Rights and Liberties. He was absolutely the one of the founding good guys and held very high levels of government, but he was a U.S. district attorney behind the scenes. As a matter of fact, there is an award for the best U.S. Di US dis uh, assistant district attorney. These are the guys who are right below the radar, and there's an award for the best one every year called the Harold J. Sull Sullivan Award. This guy was involved in the very beginnings of Road to Ruta. The Fed comic book, the Fed control of the system via computer programs and the people who are trying to print as much money as possible to destroy the dollar. That's what Ruta is writing in the sand right here. When, this is the 1981 version, and then the 2007 version, she changed it to 11 plus 9 or 9-11. See the Islamic crescent moon and... All this is at the road to Ruta. There are good guys. Don't worry. There are good guys behind the scenes. All of you who have given up faith on Q and, and the Trump good guys and all that, don't give up faith. They are there. Timing is everything. Um, but here's Ruta writing this formula called On the Road to the Golden Age. 
And it's a formula that says print as much money as possible, soaking up all the benefits of um, unbacked fiat money. Build your roads, your bridges, your houses, your military. And then when it all falls apart, boom, print money to infinity and it's over. The U.S. government has been doing that behind the scenes now. They don't tell you about it. It won't show up on this chart. Catherine Austin Fitz has found a whole bunch of it, but that's not even close to what they do. How do you think we pay for the secret space program? Jenny Moonstone pointed out something very good. The uh, In the motto of the new space, uh, space force that we have, one of the words they use, like courage and heritage. It's like, what do you mean heritage? You just started a couple of years ago. How could it be heritage? We've had a secret space program since the 40s at least. Trillions, quadrillions has gone into it to build the most amazing spacecraft you've ever seen. Not the shuttle. The shuttle is for show. This is the real deal. Anyway, so that was the idea. Print as much money as you can to implode the system and return to a gold standard. That's what Ruta was doing. And that's what these presidents have done ever since. You don't hear anybody saying we need to balance the budget. You don't hear anybody saying we got to pay out the debt. It's exactly the opposite. And that has been done every single year since we went off the gold standard in 1971. There you go. There's your update. Do I think crypto will go absolutely bonkers when the whole system falls apart? Absolutely. It might not be on these exchanges, though. We might have to wait a period of time for the criminal exchanges to close down before we know the price of Bitcoin, before we know the price of gold and silver. Because right now they aren't trading Bitcoin and they aren't trading gold and silver. They're trading massive amounts of derivatives. Massive amounts. For example, the volume in the last 24 hours in Bitcoin was 68, 68 billion dollars. That's not bad for, you know, 582 billion is the total market cap. Look at the smaller coins. Look at Tether. That's hysterical. $118 billion worth of volume in the last 24 hours, but there's only $24 billion in coins. That is pure, unadulterated market manipulation. Good old Ripple, the criminal cabal coin, uh, one-third of all Ripple traded in the last 24 hours. Litecoin is always my favorite. It's almost one-to-one. $8.4 billion worth of Litecoin traded in the last 24 hours, and there's only 8.7 that's ever been mined. That's insane. And of course, my favorite, you got to go down. It got bumped out of the top 20. I'm pissed off. Theta. Theta is at a buck 82. Look at it trades compared to the, the value uh, total market cap. It's only trading 70 million versus a 1.8 billion. That's closer to a free market value coin, if you ask me. Oh, by the way, this market cap is the total coins created. But it is not counting in the amount of coins staked, which is 56% of those are staked. There's a lot to come for Theta over the next year. This year is the year of breakout for Theta. We are going to have added to Coinbase. We're going to have Theta on national television. They have a big ad campaign. Probably get some of the most famous sports figures in the world to talk about Theta on TV. Brilliant move. And oh, by the way, there's no double spin problem because the way they structured their guardian nodes versus the validator nodes. It's an amazing blockchain. That's the beauty of it, too. Anyway, there's your Theta commercial. Again, if you don't know what the Road to Ruta theory is, go to roadtoruta.com. Look up this article. This was my very first article fully analyzing. There's one of the first IBM programs for the banking financial system. That's the first thing, I first place I found RUTA, the word RUTA, R-O-O-T-A. And yes, that comes right from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, right here. That young lady right there is RUTA. And you can find her all over this, and they talked about gold. This is Alan Greenspan is the grandmother, or uh, Arthur Burns, the head of the Fed. Ruta is also Alan Greenspan. And Ruta's grandmother, this is an amazing story, uh, talks about these scary people 
right here, when Ruta's sitting on Grandma's lap, and Ruta says, why don't we go back to the gold standard? They call them colored flowers. And Ruta's grandma, who is Arthur Burns, says, because people who live in color land, which is the gold, the gold world, are very big and might accidentally step on any pebble person who visits. We are all afraid to go there. Who is the Federal Reserve Bank afraid of? Greenspan wasn't. He says, I'm not afraid. I often play in those caves. Those caves. Where are those caves? Right in the Grand Canyon. That's where the gold is. Anyway, more at RoadToRuta.com. I didn't want to over overload you with Road to Ruta theories, but uh, this isn't the theory. Look right here. What does Ruta find in the cave? Gold. Massive amounts of gold. Go to RoadToRuta.com for more information. If you want to find really cool resources, go to the resources section. 9-11 gold and silver, all this stuff. And you want to see something really cool. This was my first discovery of the gold in the Grand Canyon. Voila, New York Times. Look at the date, June 19th, 1912, right before they created the Federal Reserve. Tell of vast riches in the Grand Canyon. Billions and billions and billions of ounces of gold in the Grand Canyon. Those and then I, there's there's Supreme Court cases. I found so much evidence. It's scary. Go check that out. It's Bixroadrunner.com. Hang in there. We'll get to the end of the line very soon. This is Bix. I'll talk to you later. So we were uh, out on the uh, mountain range yesterday, prospecting for little uh, gemstones and crystals or whatever else you want to talk the about. Crystals, baby. <laughs> And Big says, you know, I kind of had this vision, weird thing of almost like an Indian lady spirit, like kind of helping us, guiding us, and uh, was inspired to write a freaking song literally on the mountainside. He's like, I'm going to go over here for a little bit, guys. He's over there writing a song. <clears throat> so I come out here this morning, and I'm hearing him playing. I'm like, holy shit, I got to go grab my, my camera and, and film this. Go, go for it. Hi, Snippy fans. <laughs> it's called Secret Treasures, or Secret Treasures Lost in Time. It's got an Indian chant before you, and I'm not Indian, so I'll, I'll butcher yeah. it. Yeah, picture the Indian, yeah, like an Indian voice doing it. Oh, it'd be phenomenal.
find the clues in time And always trust your mind Secret treasures lost in time Secret treasures lost in time Holy crap. Wow. There you go. <laughs> I think I just filmed the music video. You got all that on the mountain yesterday? <laughs>